All right. Welcome, everyone, to Go in 5 Minutes, episode 21. Today, we're going to talk about uh, one of my favorite frameworks these days called Buffalo. Um, so Buffalo kind of fills this void we've had in Go for quite a long time. Uh, so if we wanted to build like a web application with a UI, HTML, JavaScript, front end, and the whole everything that connects to a database and so on and so forth, we kind of had to cobble together a bunch of uh, libraries and, and great packages in the Go ecosystem. But there was nothing really that held everything together, and that is Buffalo. So you see here, there's this whole list of tasks that you kind of need to handle in a modern web application. Buffalo combines those all together in this easy to digest and really well documented sort of big framework, right? It's a really long list and it kind of sucks to have to figure it all out yourself. Uh, and Buffalo does that for you. Uh, and so I call Buffalo kind of the Ruby on Rails for Go. Uh, so today is going to be the first of a series, uh, probably a pretty long series of uh, episodes on how to use Buffalo. So we're going to start today with a really, really simple overview. Okay, so the first thing to do uh, is go check out the Buffalo website, gobuffalo.io. Right, so you can see sort of the basics in the front page here, uh, and then there's tons and tons of documentation, documentation over here about sort of all the different pieces. Uh, and of course, there's great Go docs here. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, send you to uh, a project or a framework that didn't have good Go docs. Uh, and then, of course, the GitHub page here. Wait for that to load. And you can download a Buffalo release from the releases page. So I'm going to use Buffalo v0.11. And the first thing we're going to do to set up our project is we're going to run Buffalo new. Uh, so I've already run that. And Buffalo new spits out this entire folder structure under that episode 21 folder. Right? So... This is super useful because it covers absolutely everything we need to do in this list. All right, so you got one command that sets up your web app and that's it. All right, so now there's another command we can run called buffalo dev. Now buffalo dev is going to do everything we need to do, we need to do to set up a development environment. All right, so this is going to take care of setting up uh, all the compilation of our Go code. Uh, it's actually going to watch our Go files and recompile and restart the server if we change any of the Go files. Uh, it's going to compile our JavaScript even. It's going to do the same reloading for our JavaScript. And this is all in one command. So you don't have to figure this out. You don't have to figure out hot code reloading or any of the JavaScript stuff. You just run this one command. All right. so here we go. It's going to do the build. Uh, and this is a great example. So I have a compile error. I'm going to go into app.go, line 57. Uh, wait for that to load. And there we go. So we've got a compile error. I'm going to take out the compile error. Just get rid of that second parenthesis. Save it. And let's go back here. And there it starts doing the rebuild. We're going to wait for that to complete. And there we go. So we've got Buffalo now running on localhost port 3000. Let's go to that. Now there you have it. This is kind of the stock Buffalo starting page, right? So we've just got this home page. This is pre-canned, uh, but it's really useful because it tells us sort of all our paths uh, and it tells us what the handler is for that path. So everyone's probably familiar with web application handlers. So I'm going to go back. We'll just check out that handler here. Uh, basically all this does is it renders a template, index.html, uh, with a status code of 200. Okay, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to add another handler. Okay, so this is the other handler. Uh, basically, it renders, it does the same thing except it renders other.html. And we can go down uh, into the templates folder. We can see other.html is pretty simple. So the last thing I got to do, go into app.go, add another handler. We're going to call this other. And we're going, to call, we're going to use the other handler in here. So again, once I press save, we're going to go back to the console. And there you go. We're doing the rebuild. And here we go. The web server is started back up again. And I'm going to reload this page. And there we go. Now we've got the other route here. And it's handled by the other handler. So and nothing really surprising here. This is what we expected. 
Uh, but we didn't have to do anything on the command line. We didn't have to recompile or restart the server. And if I just click through to other, there you go, there's the handler. That's what we expected from the HTML. So this was kind of the basic guide of how Buffalo works uh, at the highest level. And again, I'll remind you, this is kind of the start of a, a probably a pretty long series about Buffalo. Uh, so I'll encourage you to kind of go check out the Buffalo homepage, go, gobuffalo.io. Uh, sort of get, get a feel for the basics. Uh, and tune in next time. I look forward to seeing you um, for kind of a deeper dive into some of the pieces of Buffalo. All right, take care, everybody.